Good morning. Welcome to Short Sell Power Hour. 24 Talk. hours later, 24 hours, 33 minutes, and 43 seconds, and I'm still on hold with PHH Mortgage. Can you believe it? I didn't get to go home and change my clothes. Yes, it's Thursday. You're still on hold. Neither one of us have moved. Um, I'm Kevin Kaufman, the goofball to my left, and to your right is, group, is Fred Weaver. We are Group 4610, Arizona's premier short sale team, and I am apparently at a loss for words. Okay, well, I'm not. I got a lot of words. So Shocking. Yeah, here's the deal. Um, yesterday we talked, well, you know what? If you haven't gone back and watched this week's videos, we watched, We did a great Mindset Monday from the beach in San Diego, okay? And we also celebrated our one-year anniversary of Short Sell Power Hour on Tuesday. And yesterday we talked about some techniques for smaller lenders. And after we hit, wait, no, false alarm. After we hit the pause button and, and stopped yesterday's episode, um, you came up with one more tip you yeah. want to share about yeah, small lenders. One, one so more let's tip. toss it in as a bonus. Small lenders, you can consider this a tip at any lender, but specifically at a small lender. Call early. Wake up an hour earlier and make your phone calls. The earlier you can get to yeah. them, the better. Yeah, don't be like Fred in, in the middle of a day. You're trying to call yeah. PHH Mortgage. It's it just is, not a good idea. It uh, is 1045 in the morning. Fred has been on hold yeah. for 34 minutes, and that's because he waited until after 10 in the morning to call. Yeah. Now, Bad if Fred idea. got to the office before 9 o'clock in the morning every day, he'd have been able to make an earlier call. Oh, that's not even fair. I'm always <laughs> to the office before 9. <laughs> Just kidding. I would say always. Now, the last few days before 8, it's been a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> i got to get back to my 7, 7.30 yeah. time. Just kidding, guys. But seriously, call early. Get get on the phone early. Pound them. That will help you get through. Okay, so we really do have some good content we want to bring you today, and I want to talk about something that I actually just discovered earlier today, because I was here working before 9 a.m. and I was on the phone with Wells Fargo and it's also a trend I've been seeing with uh, Bank of America over the last few days um, or last few months excuse me yeah you know we talk a lot uh, in our short sale class we don't really do it here on the show about financials what documentation is needed from the homeowner and what documentation is really being reviewed by the bank employees sure. to determine sure. if they want to accept a short sale and you know we're all familiar with the hardship letter and the financial analysis form or the budget and the bank, bank statements, statements and the pay stubs and the tax returns okay we got all that uh, but I'd like to talk about what's not really being talked about much out there in the media because the media doesn't talk well, about what really happens know, in the trenches. People don't even actually know about this. I'll, I, I will argue that most agents that specialize in short sales don't even know about this yet. Okay, so there has been a trend recently, and I think those of you that have a lot of files in Equator with B of A could, Probably starting to see this. could recognize this, that a lot of the uh, servicers and investors, I'm going to say a lot of the investors okay, that B of A services for, are not even asking for documentation. In fact, we at Group 4610 aren't even uploading all the seller's financial documentation until the file gets assigned to somebody and they request it. Meaning that we get the authorization in, they do their little setup thing at B of A, they order evaluation, it eventually gets to a phase one or, or a phase two coordinator or whatever, and then we find out do you what documentation do you really need. Right. We've had in the last couple months, in the last month specifically, I can think of one file where our coordinator said, well, this investor only requires a hardship letter. I don't need anything no else. No bank statements, no financial analysis, no pay stubs. Just a hardship letter. We've had other situations where they've said, you know what, this this lender needs bank statements and pay stubs and a hardship. Don't need, you know, you already gave us your financial don't need tax, stuff, don't but need we don't need the tax returns. returns and any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, how about a new one we got today, which was, well, if the credit score is under a certain point, I don't need any documentation. Yeah, so I'm on the phone today. I get a phone call actually from a Wells Fargo phase one negotiator. She's the setup negotiator. And um, she says to me, well, this loan, previously I didn't ask for any updated documentation from you guys, even though you faxed a bunch of stuff in, because this loan is in a test piloted program that Fannie Mae is, is test piloting right yeah. now. And Fannie Mae is piloting that if the borrower's FICO score or credit score is below a certain amount, we won't, they won't request financial documentation. So basically, if the FICO is low enough that they know that you're not paying any of your bills, is kind of what I'm insinuating they're I'm saying. I'm sure that's exactly what Then yeah. what do we care what your financials say because you've already proven, based on your history, that you're not willing to pay your bills. Yeah. Right now, anyway. Yeah. Okay? And I think it's an interesting trend. Now, I didn't get the details from her, but I do have a call coming up later this week, and I'll probably share the results maybe ne on next week's show with you. We'll do it sometime next week. Um, uh, the you know kind of what's going on in the trenches. So I'm gonna have a really good call with somebody at Wells Fargo to find out what's happening. But I'm interested to see what other programs Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, well, some of your big investors that are rolling doing out. Fannie's doing something. Freddie's got to be right behind them on their tails. Um, and I would imagine most of the other investors, 
at least the bigger ones, the bigger players will follow suit. Yeah. So I'm really curious, is it going to just be a credit score thing or, or is it going to be, uh, you know, the investor that our negotiator, B of A, was talking about? It didn't matter about the financials. It mattered about the, the valuation, the yeah. BPO, and the amount of the offer and things like that. So what are going to be the different factors that could potentially, potentially make some of these negotiations easier Absolutely. Because we need to, because we don't have to bring as much paperwork into this mess. I'm excited for it, and I, I hope that Fannie Mae test pilots it, rolls it out and likes it. Because we've shared this on the show several weeks ago that a lot of your smaller private labeled investors follow the rules and guidelines of Fannie Mae. Fannie Mae is the largest investor out there of loans, yeah. and a lot of your smaller lenders follow what Fannie Mae does. So if Fannie Mae does this and finds success. That means we you could see some shifting across the whole short sale you know, world of less documentation being asked for, which in my opinion means less requests for cash contribution as well. Faster turnaround Faster time. turnaround times potentially. Of course, we're still going to have our other challenges of working with people and uh, BPOs. But at the end of the day, I'm I, I really am interested to see where this goes. If you've got anything else you want to share with us, please share it below in the Absolutely. comment section. Again, guys, maybe one of you heard about this already way before we did. Maybe one of you has more information. Just please share it. Share it with us because we only share with you what we experience. Yeah. So. Come on back tomorrow for a Freaky Friday episode. It's going to be freaky. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. It's Freaky Friday. What else would it be? Normal Friday? I don't know. On three, one, two, three. Short sale power hour. Short sale power hour. Crush it. Still on hold. 48 hours later. We'll see you tomorrow.